I recently purchased a full set of CH joystick, throttle, and pedals for $40 Canadian off a guy from Kijiji. Why were they so cheap, you might ask? Well, all three are from the mid-90s, which means that instead of using USB, they use a game port connector. I plan on converting them to USB, but it'll take some time for the parts to arrive. The joystick and throttle are actually pretty similar to the current CH product offerings. The joystick has undergone a bit of a rebranding, changing from the F16 combat stick to just combat stick, but the rest of the buttons and dials are the same. It's a similar story with the Pro Throttle, but aside from the three LEDs that serve as a mode indicator, and the logo being a bit less colorful, there's actually a functional change this time as well. On the current Pro Throttle, the 8-way hat has been moved to where this button is, and where the 8-way hat used to be, they've added an analog joystick. In addition to game port, the throttle also connects to your computer using either a PS2 or DIN connector. I initially thought this might be for a mouse input, but I later found out it was actually meant as a keyboard input. The PS2 and DIN connectors actually have both a male and female end acting as a pass-through for your keyboard. Lastly, we have the pedals. These differ the most from the pedals currently offered by CH, the CH Pro pedals. These pedals appear to just be called CH product pedals, and lack any yaw movement, making them closer to pedals you'd use with a racing wheel. They even include a switch to change between plane and car mode. I believe the difference is that in plane mode, the pedals are treated as a single axis, and in car mode, they're two independent axes, but I forgot to test this for myself. Connecting everything together is an interesting novelty as well. As most computers would only have a single game port, the pedals and throttle actually have female game port connectors in addition to the male ones. In the case of the pedals, it's the cable that has the two connectors, labeled joystick and game port. For the throttle, the female connector is located on the back. The joystick plugs into the pedals, then the pedals plug into the throttle. Finally, you're left with just the throttles, game port, and keyboard connectors to plug into your computer. Prior to purchasing the Hotas and pedals, the seller informed me that it had been about 10 years since he last used any of them, and that they had just been sitting in a box in his basement since then. He reassured me that everything worked when he had last used them, but I wanted to test them for myself. Fortunately, I have a whole bunch of older systems in my basement. Unfortunately, only the bottom three computers even had cards with game ports on them, which meant that I'd have to move at least the top half of the pile. Ah, oh, that's where those Model M's went. I ran into more bad luck after plugging everything into the first computer, as that one wouldn't boot. I believe the reset button was wired to be the start button, but regardless, the switch didn't work either. I moved the second computer over to the monitor before taking a closer look at the back of the tower. Damn it, this one doesn't have PS2. That one wasn't going to work either. Luckily, the final PC seemed to work fine, except for this really annoying alarm. I think the battery on the motherboard being dead, or almost dead, was the cause. But regardless, it booted up into... Windows 2000. Huh. Luckily, the beeping stopped after I rebooted the system. I did forget to record some of the stuff I'm about to mention, but I wanted to share my struggle anyways, as this whole process took me hours to do, so bear with the limited footage. First, I was able to add almost everything by opening the game controller panel and adding a 6-button joystick with two POVs and throttle with rudder slash pedals. This registered input from everything, except the buttons on the throttle. To solve this, I tried going into the Add Other menu when adding a game controller and selected CH Products Game Ports. This required a reboot, and is where the issue started popping up. I discovered that Windows XP was also installed on a hard drive in the system, and after the reboot, the computer would not boot back into Windows 2000. This wouldn't have been a problem, except now I had troubles adding the controller manually, so I had to get back into Windows 2000. I believe the two hard drives were on separate controllers, and I ended up just unplugging the hard drive containing XP after failing to find the boot option in the antiquated BIOS. I also started getting invalid system disk errors, 
which I promptly ignored as I couldn't be bothered to troubleshoot. After getting back into Windows 2000, I took a look at the floppy disks the previous owner had included, and that's when I discovered the throttle was supposed to be plugged into the keyboard PS2 port. From what I read, it seems like the software maps the buttons on the throttle to keyboard keys, and that's how it gets around the limited number of game port inputs. Unfortunately, the software couldn't detect the throttle, which I attribute to the software being meant for Windows 95 and being incompatible with Windows 2000. In the end, I wasn't able to test the additional throttle buttons, but I guess I'll find out how well they work once I start the USB conversion. Thanks for watching.